What were the basic arguments you made uh, in your post that was critical of the Black Lives Matter movement? Yeah, well, basically, first, I just start off by looking at uh, the core claim of the Black Lives Matter movement, that police more readily shoot black people or that black people are disproportionately shot by the police. Um, and, you know, the, the statistics on that are pretty clear, actually. So about, about 30% to 100% more whites are shot each year by police. But the Black Lives Matter movement says, well, there's six times as many whites in the country, so there should be six times as many whites shot by police if police are shooting people in an unbiased way, um, basically making that decision when they need to use lethal force in an unbiased way. But this is, like, this is a profoundly dishonest argument, or at least a profoundly un, um, uninformed argument. So I basically uh, lay that out. It's uh, So I sort of review that police are only supposed to use lethal force when their li life is at risk or the life of someone nearby is at risk. Uh, and black communities often have much higher rates of violent crime. So of course, police will encounter more situations while they're policing those communities, which you know need the protection of the police, will encounter uh, people who pose that sort of risk more often. Um, and then I, so I, you know, and when you look at it that way, of course, uh, when you compare it uh, to the rate of uh, violent crime, or we compare it to the rate at which police officers are murdered, which is probably the best measure of the danger that they face, it's actually whites who are slightly disproportionately uh, shot by police uh, and not blacks. So, who, uh, I think there's a lot of theories about why that might be. I doubt it's because of racism. Uh, but um, so I basically review that and then I review some, probably the best study of that matter uh, by Roland Fryer, um, who looks at the details of specific shootings uh, and, and does a, a big statistical study and basically confirms what those high level statistics show. Zach, I think it's important to point out that Roland Fryer happens to be black. Uh, that ought not matter uh, in, in the real world, but happens to be black. He's a professor of economics at Harvard and grew up in the hood. And he did a study, as you point out in, yeah. in your paper, uh, where he assumed he was gonna corroborate the idea that the police were engaging in systemic racism against blacks, more likely to shoot and kill blacks just because they were black. He was shocked that his findings show the opposite. He got rid of his entire research team, hired a new research team, bad news, same results. Yeah, and, and, what, and his research really confirms the high level statistics, which, so the, the amazing thing about this is, I, you know, I really looked to see if there was any studies that contradicted or cast doubt on Roland Fryer's research and what the high level statistics showed. And I couldn't find a single you know, properly designed study that cast any doubt on it. So there's this really like a very one-sided story from uh, academic point of view. Uh, when you look at those statistics and you look at the studies available, it's really hard to find anything on the other side. You know, and Zach, this has real world consequences, as you point out. You talk about the numbers of homicides uh, in some cities and the numbers of homicides in general that would not have occurred but for this notion of uh, the police engaging in systemic racism that's causing the cops to pull back and to no longer engage in proactive policing. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the, uh, you know, it's, impo it's, it's impossible to pinpoint the exact increase in homicides because no one, because there's no way to say, well, this homicide is a result of you know, pull, pull back, police pull back, and this one isn't. But basically what Roland Fryer did and a number of other studies have looked at is like, what is the timing here? So we can look at cities that had like a big, um, big BLM protests, Black Lives Matter protests, and that caught national attention. And we can compare those to cities that didn't have that kind of um, big kinds of protests and see what the murder rates do in those cities and see what the violent crime rates do in those cities. And because those protests happened in different cities at different times, that also helps to isolate the effect specifically of those protests as opposed to long-term ongoing trends in crime nationally or even regionally. And what they discovered is when Roland Fryer did it, for instance, he looked at uh, five cities that did have um, these kinds of protests and uh, compared it to about 20 cities that did not. And he found that in just those five cities, uh, there was somewhere in the neighborhood of 900 excess murders just over just over a two year period. So when you extrapolate those, those results out to cities all across America that have now experienced these kinds of protests and pulled back in policing, um, 
and you extrapolate it out to other time periods, not just the, the, those two years, you're looking at probably tens of thousands of people murdered. But it's, you know, it's a, I ha, I'm not aware of any study that's tried to estimate the total impact of these kinds of protests and particularly the falsehoods that, that are promulgated in these protests. I'm not sure that of any study that's tried to evaluate the overall murder impact. So it's just, it's sort of a guessing game, right. but you know, at the very lowest, we're talking about a couple thousand murders, uh, people dead who wouldn't otherwise be dead. Um, and it's just, so it's just astounding the impact. Uh, and it could easily be tens of thousands. You know, and, and Zach, the police are where the crime is. And it's a fact that a young black man is eight times more likely to be murdered than a young white man. And almost always the murderer is another young a black man. The number one cause of preventable death for young white men is accidents, like drownings or car accidents. Zach, the number one cause of, prevent of death, preventable or not, for young black men is homicide. And again, almost always at the hands of another young black man. That's why the cops are there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, these are communities that need protection. They're, they are vulnerable to violent criminals. And it's just amazing to me that people are saying, and as you point out, the police kill more unarmed whites every year than unarmed blacks. Yet you talk about a, a survey that was done uh, among people who describe themselves as very liberal. And among the very liberal people, more than half of them believe the police kill over 1,000 unarmed black men every year. And I believe in a recent year, the number was something like four. And about 8% of the very yeah. liberal, self-described very liberal people believe that the police kill 10,000 unarmed blacks every year. Yeah. And so you can understand if you believed those things, if you believed there were police were killing 10,000 unarmed blacks every year, then then the Black Lives Matter movement and the claims they were they were they're making would make a lot more sense, right? So it's it's it actually makes it a little bit more understandable when you realize just how radically disinformed uninformed people are, or disinformed is probably actually the better word. But but then that just leads you to the question of like how did how have we totally failed to communicate the most rudimentary facts about policing and and racial violence? to our populace, um, and, and especially to one, really to one side of our populace. Uh, and so that sort of leads you to the question of well, what's going on in these media institutions, and actually. Hope you enjoyed that short video. Now to watch the full video, just click on the link below and watch it on Epic TV. It only costs $1 a month to sign up, and you'll get unlimited access to all the great exclusive content on the platform. Now, as you know, this show is now exclusively on Epic TV. So by signing up for just $1 a month, you're supporting me and my team to keep it going. I promise you, you'll not be disappointed. Thank you and God bless. I'll see you on Epic TV. Larry Elder here, and I've got some great news for you. If you're tired of the censorship in this country, then you're in luck. You can go over to epictv.com and watch honest programs that don't spin the facts. EpicTV.com is a brand new, no censorship video platform where you can watch not only my show, but other deep documentaries, great program, wholesome movies that you can watch with your entire family. So head over to EpicTV.com. I'll see you there.